Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Luke. Remember those commercials, Where's the Beef? I do. <laughs> Boy, how old does that make us? Uh, almost as old as she was when she filmed them. Yeah, and she's been dead a while. <laughs> uh, so, let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Um, do you eat a lot of Taco Bell? Isn't that your favorite fast food? It's almost exclusively the only fast food I ever go to. You really like the meat, huh? I do. What do you think they season it with? Love. We're going to tell you next on Men Are So Smart. Hi there, welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. You'll never guess what Taco Bell uses to season its beef. Mm. Now, we know the secret behind why McDonald's fries are so addictive and how Chick-fil-A cooks its signature chicken to perfection. But when it comes to Taco Bell's oft-raved-about beef tacos, we couldn't help but wonder what makes them the taco the town. Ooh, I see what you did there. I did with the taco. That's what I did with the taco. Yeah, yeah I got that. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Okay, uh, so in order to demystify the delectability behind the iconic snack, mm -hmm. we sifted through the ingredient list of Taco Bell's best-selling item. Okay. The seasoned beef. Mm -hmm. which hides under a pile of lettuce mm. and sprinkle of shredded cheese. Always with the food on the show. Ah, oh, I know. But this is good. Okay. So that beef is spiked with a handful of expected spices, such as chili pepper, onion powder, tomato powder. But one seasoning stood out to us the most. Here it comes. <laughs> C. <laughs> That's for our Spanish-speaking friends around the world. The bell adds a dash of cocoa to its beef recipe, which, surprisingly enough, works wonders. Hmm. Chocolate, this is where the science comes in. Chocolate is often used to add a subtle flavor and deepness that counteracts piquant peppers in Mexican dishes, such as mole and stews. I thought it was a stew. While Taco Bell admitted in 2011 that it added cocoa powder to its recipe to enrich the meat's color, mm. the Bell's beef recipe has changed since then, when it tidied up its menu of unnecessary additives last year, such as high fructose corn syrup. Gone. Unnatural dyes, gone. Now, instead of cocoa powder, Taco Bell uses real cocoa. And so, you know, I love me some chocolate. Like chocolate milk, you could put a taco in there now. Oh, dang. Yeah. yeah. So besides the tacos, the yeah. fast food giant fills its crunch wraps, chalupas, cheesy gordita crunch, and even Fiesta Taco Salad with cocoa spiked seasoned beef. Wow. Hmm. What's more, it also sprinkles cocoa powder into a handful of more unassuming offerings like its grilled steak marinade as well as the creamy jalapeno sauce. Hmm. Who would have thought that? I, not me. Yeah, me neither. You, you certainly can't taste it. Mm, or can you? Maybe it just adds such a subtle... You know, because... Uh, have you ever had, uh, we had some wine that had chocolate in it. No, I've never done that. I'm not, not big on the wine, but. Okay. Uh, I'm also not a gigantic wine drinker. And, and I'm not a, I don't like wine particularly. Some wines are okay. Mm -hmm. But this one was fantastic. Wow. Uh, and it's, it is the, the chocolate is fairly subtle, but you can. And if you and if you didn't know it was chocolate, you would go, hmm, I wonder what that is. But then when somebody tells you it's chocolate, it kind of springs that little, oh, that is what I'm tasting. I know you're not big on the wine, but does it have an aftertaste? No, oh. no, it's very, it's very in your mouth now and gone. Huh? Yeah. Well, I might, 
No, I'm not I'm gonna try that. Sorry, never mind. And I'll stick to the Taco Bell to get my wine. <laughs> But you know what? I'll see if I can find a ball and I'll bring it for our next show. Oh, oh, oh yeah, right. Mm -hmm. You say a lot of things. <laughs> you don't do a lot of things. All right, that brings us to our next story today. And this is all about what I would determine to be invasion of privacy. However, it looks like Amazon and Walmart, which have long been battling in, out in retail arenas, both want to keep a very close eye on their workers. Earlier this year, Amazon patented smart wristbands that can make sure a warehouse's workers' hands are always moving. Wow. Does that include that when is, you're in the bathroom? That is a little personal. Yeah, it is. <laughs> now, its rival has patented an audio surveillance system, check this out, which can be used to listen to conversations between employees and customers at checkout. Now, before you mind blows, think that Walmart has been listening to all the juicy gossip you've been dropping at checkout lines. Know that it's still just a patent. And of course, the company has refused to confirm or deny whether it's planning to actually use the technology to spy on its workers. So a person, a spokesperson told BuzzFeed News, we're always thinking about new concepts and ways that will help us further enhance how we serve customers, but we don't have any further details to share on these patents at this time. The audio surveillance system Walmart designed is composed of several sensors that can collect all kinds of audio data, mm -hmm. including beeps and the rustling of paper bags. Uh, any data it gathers can be used to uh, assess an employee's performance. For instance, the sounds items make when they're placed inside a bag can tell a company how efficient someone is at bagging purchases. Okay. Uh, customers' voices can also indicate how long a line is and how quickly a cashier can get through all of them. What can it do, Ronnie? Jeez. Yeah. A BuzzFeed News points, as Bud New, Buzz News Feed point. let's try it again. As BuzzFeed News points, though, the most invasive feature is the system's ability to understand conversations and use them to judge an employee's performance. If, however, the performance metric is based on the content of the conversation, for example, was a specific greeting used or script followed, the system can process the audio detected by the sound sensors to determine the performance metric. Hmm. Whoa, it's like an analytic. That's crazy. It could get chattier cashiers in trouble, even if they're customer favorites for being helpful and friendly both. Uh, the idea definitely suits Walmart's business model in the same way smart wristbands suit Amazon's, but that doesn't necessarily mean they will be effective. Uh, Cornell Industry and Labor Relations School Assistant Professor uh, Ifiomi Ajunwa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've got a friend named that, too. Do you really? Yeah. Yeah. What a coincidence. <laughs> told the publication... Well, it's a common name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he told the publication that several studies have shown that there is a psychological impact of pervasive surveillance. Yeah, there is. Yeah, she said that it can lead to this opposition feeling yep. where employees view the employer not as benevolent, but as dictators. Yeah. What about a benevolent dictator? Not uh, possible. Well, no, I don't I, think so. Yeah. In other words, the audio surveillance system could backfire on the retail giant and give rise to a resistance. <laughs> Viva la resistance! It sounds like the kind of the plot for a Star Wars movie a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> if Walmart still decides to install it, though, there's little employees can do. Ajunwa said it's perfectly legal, so as long as the company says it's for business purposes. Well, I don't know if I can draw this comparison completely, but it's kind of like those traffic cameras. Yeah. Are they there for the purpose they tell us or for something that is the aftermath, which is making money? So here's what we're saying. Is this really to train customer uh, employees to um, stick to a script and not vary or be personable. 
Uh, is it going to make them feel that they're being watched and listened to and their privacy is being invaded? There's a lot of things that go into this. Well, I mean, Walmart, should you be afraid to talk to a customer? Uh, absolutely not. And I think Walmart would encourage it, honestly, to interact with customers. I know I've been to, we have a Walmart right around the corner there on Greenback and Hazel. And we, mm -hmm. we go there, we need anything almost. Um, some of the cashiers are very over the top friendly and some of them are, it just seems like their dog just died. Oh, that's me. Yeah. So <laughs> it is, it's, um, I think maybe, you know, people that are constantly that way should just be stocking shelves. So maybe they shouldn't have a lot of interaction with customers. So, uh, you know what, maybe it's the best way to, to put the proper employees in the proper place. Okay. It seems a little invasive to me that they're actually listening to the way you're packaging the bags. Yeah, I'm not sure. And, and who knows? I'm, it's hard to say how sophisticated this technology is. Mm -hmm. uh, but... And the beeps from the scan. Right. What exactly is that for? Well, and I will tell you this. Um, I've, because I work at a national critical infrastructure, I've been to quite a few... Uh, That's them calling him right now. Yeah. I've been to quite a few terrorism-type schools. And one, one of them we went to dealt with uh, security at Disneyland. Security at Disneyland is probably the most technologically, technologically advanced in the world. Uh, they have facial recognition. They have listening posts set up throughout. Um, employees do walk around with, you know, little microphones that can hear other people talk. They have, they have employees walking through the park that look like patrons. So I had just come from one of these schools and we were at Disneyland with my family and I told my son that this is the same thing. I go, Disneyland has a capability of almost no matter where you are in the park, they can be there in 30 seconds. They can listen to, you know, countless conversations and they're listening for key words you know, to keep the park safe. Uh, and then coincidentally or not, within 30 seconds, uh, a Disneyland Park employee wearing a black polo shirt and very nondescript and had just a little tiny Mickey Mouse uh, lapel pin, cut through the crowd, came right to my son and I and said, are you guys enjoying your day? It was very, like, over the top. We heard exactly what you said. And we're not afraid to admit that. Yes. It was so crazy. And, hey, maybe it was a total coincidence. But she absolutely parted that stream of people like Moses parted the Red Sea. And walked straight to us, right up in my face, and asked us if we were having a good day. Ronnie, I want you to come out of semi-retirement. And I want you to get a gig there. Um, and I want to know everything that goes on behind the scenes. <laughs> but I will tell you this. Oh, speaking of Disneyland, I've never told you this story. Back when I was at a local radio station here in Sacramento, California... I came up with this idea of um, a radio phone bit, which was called uh, Lou Gallagher calls in sick to work at places where he doesn't work. I remember that. Okay. Well, I came up with the idea. And so we thought, well, let's give it a try first before we do it on the air and see how it goes. But who should we call? Well. Taco Bell? That probably would have been better. <laughs> uh, I can tell you that for whatever reason, we decided to call Disneyland. I think it was because 
I want it to be calling as Goofy, calling in sick to work. <laughs> and we went through three or four different people. And the bit was so funny. We were laughing our butts off in our office, but it wasn't being recorded. We were just doing a trial run. Right. It was the funniest thing ever. And finally, we got out of the bit and we hung up. And sure enough, within a half an hour, Phone rang. our program director got a call from Disneyland. Oh. And I don't know how, but they must have traced the phone number. Uh -huh. And they led right back to the radio station. They had, uh, I don't know, a talk with our boss. And I have one message because I learned something from all of this. Can I tell you what it is? Yeah. Don't mess with the mouse. Yes. They yeah. don't fool around. No, they don't. All right. Uh, I'll leave us, and we'll leave you with those words right there of yeah. wisdom. Yeah. Don't mess around in Disneyland or Disney World if you may be listening right. on the right. East Coast. Okay, or Ronnie. Disney Europe. <laughs> yeah. Or the Disney Store. Period. <laughs> If it has it, and Goofy. We mentioned Goofy? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Don't mess with Goofy. No. All right. That's going to wrap up uh, this episode of Men Are So Smart. You'll find all of the information on us below in the description. Uh, uh, links to our social media, our blogs, and of course our sponsors. Thanks to them for making all of this possible. Um, we appreciate your comments. Love to hear from you. Yeah. We respond rather quickly. And finally, if you enjoyed the show and you're still watching, and sometimes we respond brutally. Yeah. So. Yeah. There's that. We don't have to hold anything back on no. the show. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you'll find all of that information right there below. And we will comment. If you comment, we will get back to you. Uh, if you like the show, give it a like. And if you did, subscribe to our channel. It's called the Gallagher Network. I'm Luke Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And we'll see you next time on Men Are So Smart. Wow. We got that down, huh? Woo! Woo.